Hey, welcome to another episode of Legion Elite Motorsports. I'm your host, Isaiah. And I wanted to uh, switch things up, at least for this episode, because I have a whole host of uh, stuff that's happening in the background, and you guys haven't been clued into it yet. So um, I want to uh, clue you in on that. Also, um, I want you to see what's coming up in the future pertaining to Legion Elite Motorsports, um, mainly in the parts division. Um, also, I want to let you guys know, uh, and this is for everyone, uh, we're going to try to start scheduling everybody accordingly, but um, if you are needing work on your Conquest or Starion, just hit me up and, you know, I will take care of you, get everything running right, and kind of take it from there, including performance options. Everybody needs it. Uh, but, um, yeah, let's get started. I wanted to show you guys some things that I've gotten, uh, progress I've made, so let's get to it. Okay, so, um, I may have shown you guys this before, but, um... This is the original intake manifold for the 1.8. Uh, and this is for the Mirage. And basically, um, I have the twin cam head, which I've shown you guys already before also. Um, this intake manifold doesn't fit that head because of this area here. And the ports are too small. So, I got another intake manifold uh, that actually goes with the head, the original one. And this, I got this from Malaysia. So um, it took a while to come in, of course, uh, because of the epidemic. But um, it came in, um, this one, as you could see, huge difference in port size. Um, the injectors, I got some uh, 1000 cc high impedance EV14 connector, so it has to be rewired um, with the stock fuel rail, which is kind of counterproductive, but uh, until I source out a aftermarket one, this one will suffice for now. Also, I've upgraded the map sensor. This is a four bar map sensor. Um, and then I upgraded to a 72 millimeter throttle body, which is humongous compared to factory. And then I recycled the uh, idle air. For some reason, the aftermarket ones don't work properly. So I know this one works good, it's kind of dirty. I uh, intend on cleaning it up later, but um, I just want to make sure that it's working properly with the new computer and whatnot. But anyway, so I wanted to show you guys this, definitely. So that's one thing uh, that I've got together that's gonna be going on ahead soon. I still have to source out the gasket. And if I can't source it out, I'll make it myself. They have like a um, universal gasket material. You kind of cut it out and do the whole spiel. But anyway, uh, moving on. I also got my block. This is the 4G93 block, and now it has O-rings. So now I am boost certified, and I can take it to the moon. The block is 100% complete, so the engine build series for this will be coming up soon in general. Let's take a look at that looks really really good and i had the block resurfaced so it's nice and sharp freshly cut and also um this is the crankshaft right here to this engine um last thing i have to do is get the crankshaft uh cleaned up so it'll be micro polished and it will be um 100 balanced so the whole rotating assembly is going to get uh sent into the machine shop they're going to balance it so this engine will you know last without destroying bearings from vibration technically 
So I have everything for the engine except the flywheel. Let me show you why. So this is the flywheel, okay? Um, this is the stock flywheel for the 1.8. Granted, this one's rusty and nasty, but uh, nothing the machine shop can't clean up, so that's not a big deal, but the issue lies in the actual design of the flywheel. So uh, your average cars, Eclipse or uh, Gallant, whatever, that uh, is um, manual has a solid flywheel. This one is kind of like a flex plate, super thin, and this will not take the horsepower level that I'm trying to achieve. So, thanks to some good friends and some information from Puerto Rico, uh, I actually sourced out another flywheel that has to be modified, granted, um, so that's gonna be going to the machine shop shortly, but um, it has to be modified, but it is 100% thick, and it gives me a larger diameter uh, clutch disc. So I believe this one is 215, I'm probably wrong, on that one, on the total surface diameter. But the one I'm gonna be using is 225. So that's definitely larger than um, the factory one, which is good because of the larger surface area, that means that it's less, um, how do you say, abrasive on the clutch assembly because it has more uh, surface area to stick to. Kind of like brakes, you know what I mean? You get a tiny disc, only grabs this much, it's gonna slip. But if you can grab this much, it's gonna grip all day. So same concept, um, you know, uh, I'm gonna show you guys that in just a second. So you guys can see uh, what I'm working with. And as you can see here, it's seven bolt. So um, the one that I purchased is actually a seven bolt also and also has a bad reputation for crank walk. If you guessed it, you're absolutely correct. It's the 4G63, but it's the 1995 and up flywheel for front wheel drive GST model that I um, purchased and have to get modified. So um, I'm gonna show you guys that flywheel and explain exactly what has to happen. Okay, so here is the unit that needs to be modified. And as you can see, this is way thicker than any flex plate. So already we off to a good start. Okay, so the modifications that need to happen is A, this has to be ported to match this unit. Then after that, On the back of the flywheel, this lip here has to be removed because it will hit the rear main seal. So that has to be machined off. And then last but not least is the bolts have to be longer because the original bolts are too short. And I do have a part number for the longer flywheel bolts, which I will be giving shortly. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this guy and match it up to the other guy. So, seven bolt to seven bolt. As soon as I get this even, it should match up perfectly to the original. Okay, it's not cooperating. But, as you can see, they're a perfect fit. Let's see, this thing's moving all over the place. Oh, 
turn it this way. So, yep. That's going to work perfectly. And uh, all that has to happen is those modifications and you should be good to go. So, um, that's what I'm going to be doing uh, in a couple days. Um, but yes, let's move on to the next thing. And on Starion news, so this is the head um, fresh from the machine shop. It's been modified a particular way um, to make sure that knock doesn't occur in the combustion chamber. So this head has been uh, modified with new valve stem seals. Valves have been reseated um, and everything with new locks and retainers um, and everything. But this is a M9 head. And as everyone knows, or some may not, this has the heart-shaped combustion chamber. And basically, the sharp edge that used to be right here was removed in order to make sure that there's no hot spots on one side of the piston. So there's gonna be a photo popping up in your upper right-hand side of the screen showing what it looked like before and this is the after. Okay, so um, as you can see, there's a lot of meat between cylinders. That means that this combustion chamber is actually smaller than your traditional combustion chamber. So when it comes to your head gasket, as you can see, you have plenty of meat there will be no cracking or anything of the sort. So that's actually uh, good. And we have here an Ajusa head gasket. And a lot of people ask, does it have the X on it? The X basically means it's the aftermarket gasket. If it does not have that X, it's a regular OEM replacement. So ours has the X, which means it's, I believe, a couple layer or maybe a single layer metal, which is great. I've had nothing but success with this uh, gasket personally. This is the same one that is on my silver car. So um, this head is fresh straight from the machine shop. Um, I need to clean it up a bit, get this uh, blue stuff off of here. But this is an M9. As you can see, the valve stem seals have been replaced and the valves have been reseated. So everything is uh, airtight and this is ready for business. So um, again, on the Starion tip, I ordered some goodies from dad, which is a uh, machine shop. This is valve stem seals. We got uh, locks here and head gasket, of course. And we have one millimeter oversized valves for intake and exhaust. This is, you know, just good to keep. You never know when this will come in handy. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, you know, going to go on one of my other heads. A little experimental project there. But I show you this. I show you this to basically let you know I have... Uh, another project coming together that uh, you guys can actually purchase. And um, these are vortice funnels, just to give you an idea. Um, once it does come out, uh, I'm gonna be personally testing it, making sure everything fits properly and take it from there. But until then, we have another surprise. Yes, she is back and alive. It's been neglected at uh, 
the other facility. So I took the time to bring her to the house so she can go back under the knife. So, um, the travel time was about an hour and this car gave me no troubles. Now, as you know, uh, there's a lot of work to be done on this one, missing a lot of parts and pieces. Um, when it rains, you know, it rains inside. So looking at seals and everything. But she drove great, uh, no huge complaints, except some subtle things I still have to run, which is the uh, relay for the fuel pump so I don't have to attach it to the battery. Small stuff like that, but regardless to what she runs, she is the first example of the fuel tank. I've already done some updates, so the fuel tank is slightly different, but at the same time, it functions just the same. So let's take a look at that. And she's looking and feeling good. So let's take a peek at the old engine. Here she is in all her glory. And I'm gonna do a radiator flush on this one because uh, I just put water for initial startup um, just to get all of the rusty stuff out of the block and uh, then I'll be able to flush it through the radiator. I'll probably disconnect one of the hoses probably the upper and then just let it uh, flow out of the bottom clean out the block clean out the radiator and she'll be good to go so this is the downpipe I have on there so far um, I'm gonna finish the rest of it and kind of uh, um, make an exhaust from scratch so it's gonna have some unique features. This is, uh, of course, in the future. We have way too many projects and a lot of things going on right now. But um, if you're not familiar with this car, um, got this car not running, um, no computer, no nothing. So I purchased a full standalone, Microtech, of course and um, got the car running. I still need to plug in a uh, wideband O2 sensor so I can get the numbers proper. But um, other than that, she runs great, uh, goes in the boost just fine. Uh, imitation type S blow valve sounds great. Um, and yeah, she's turnkey, no issue. So um, of course, there's gonna be a lot of uh, rust that needs to be addressed in general, but um, including suspension is kind of shot. But um, at least she's alive, she's running, and then I'm gonna kind of take it from there. Uh, we got stock stuff here. We're gonna keep the AC. I still have to introduce you guys to the owner of this particular car, which will be soon, definitely soon. More so once it's more complete. But, um, yeah, she's here. She's alive. She's kicking. She is doing what she is made to do. And that's run and run hard. So, um, yep, I'm actually going to add in a, a boost gauge because I have not the slightest idea how much boost she is running currently. But um, I'm going to, you know, make sure it's proper, make sure it comes online uh, the way I want it to and everything and kind of take it from there. And with that being said, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you like what you see, definitely make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon for updated notifications. And until then, I'll see you next episode.